You might remember this setup from a previous video, which I will link up here. It's a D flip-flop. We have NOR gates here. Uh, it's gated. We have a clock signal coming in. And I think this one changes on the rising edge. Let's just check. So that's low. Yep, and there it is, change. That's low. Yep, and there it is, change. So that's all terrific, and it worked well. But I was wondering if it could all be replaced with this guy. This is a CD4013. Build as... Uh, two D flip-flops. Let's get one side fired up and see if it works. All right, so what have we got here? We'll just use the one side and we've got VCC and ground and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six and same on the other side. And our six are, let's just label this, that's VCC and that's ground. We've got here is Q and here is Q not. Uh, and this is often labeled as Q2 because Q1 is the other side. So um, yeah, and there's a lot of different information about this chip on the internet actually. I think that because it depends on what you're using it for. Uh, what I'm using it for is hopefully to mimic the uh, the original flip-flop that that I made. So let's just put a uh, an LED on that with a current limiting resistor. And then what have we got next? Well, we've got the clock signal. Okay, so that's just going to be a square wave coming in from the 555, all good. And then we've got a reset and a set, and they're both set to ground according to the data sheet. Uh, well, so what we've got is, I'll just put a little bit of the, I guess you could call it a truth table, um, from the data sheet anyway. So we've got data and we've got Q2 and Q02. So we've got rising edge and if they're both set low and data is low, then Q2 is low and Q1 is high, sorry, Q2 not is high. Also on a rising edge, if these are both low, then we've got data coming in as one, and this should then flip to one on that rising edge. So both set to ground here, R and S, and then we've got our data. I'll just skip over here, and this is our data coming in, which will be our button in our case. All right, so let's get that all wired up and, uh, and see if we can't get some uh, flip-flop action. All right, so here we are on the breadboard. We've got the CD4013 all strapped in and uh, got power coming in and ground. Then we've got a couple of LEDs. We've got the red one on Q2 and the blue one we've got on Q2 not. We've got set and reset pulled down to ground. We've got our data line coming in, which has also got a pull down resistor. I think that's a 10K in there. Then we've got our clock coming in. So um, everything looks good. And in fact, according to the truth table, that's exactly what should be happening. The next thing is what happens on a rising edge. So if we go to falling and then rising, nothing happens. So let's go falling and hold. Yep, here we go, all good. So that's uh, clipped over when it's on the rising edge and back again. Yeah, that's interesting actually. So it, it didn't uh, go straight away. So when it was high, let's do that again. See, it's actually on the rising edge. That's interesting. So when it's high, nothing happens. It's only when it's the actual rising edge. So that's where it does differ from the other one. That's, uh, yeah, that is unexpected. Let's try that again. So there it goes. Interesting. Well, uh, I'd say that's pretty much the uh, circuit working. Just wanted to uh, maybe have a bit of a, uh, a chat about the whole philosophy behind these guys. So, you know, what have you got when you set up a project? You've got a lot of different tools to choose from. And uh, along the way, you might have to deal with something like straight logic gates. So in the last project, for instance, um, I had a little transistor there which was operating as an inverter or a not gate. And then the next step up, I suppose, is sort of the, like combined gates. And that's pretty much what uh, we had with the quad two input NOR gate. So you've got a lot of gates inside a chip. Then the next step up is probably like more complex ICs uh, like this one. 
So this is the CD4013. You could even include that guy there, that's C555. We've got a number of components mashed into an IC. So you might pull that one out when you uh, have a need for it. Certainly the 555 is, uh, is pretty handy. The next step up might be something like um, maybe an A Tiny 13 and then you know onwards to the uh, at mega 328 and beyond so you know where do you choose well so far i've been looking at a lot of these different things and i've you know i've used a lot of them and sometimes in combination so philosophically speaking i'm not sure that i'm really drawn to one or the other i'm really enjoying learning about all these different logic uh, gates i'm just working my way through the cd4000 series um, and then when i'm in the middle of a project and i just need something quick uh, you know, to invert a signal or whatever, and I'm I'm short of GPIO, then uh, then these guys come into their own. Uh, there is a project that I actually did a while back, which was sort of like a, a child's toy, using an XNOR gate. Uh, I'll link that one up, um, uh, and that was a combination of I think it was an A tiny eighty five, and a logic gate. So yeah, not sure where I sit on that continuum, but I think it's probably a good thing to be able to dip in and out as you see fit. Anywho, that's the circuit working for this week, and uh, we'll catch you next time.